please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi, very good afternoon. You're watching Your Stocks on CNBC TV 18. I'm Ikta Batra and with me is Bangla Malu and it's turning out to definitely be quite a nerve-wracking session ahead of the budget. So we're down around half odd percent for the Nifty and what really seems to be more painful is what's happening with the mid-cap index which is at the low point of the day down around two odd percent with a weak advanced decline ratio as we speak currently standing at around one is to two. A lot of results have peppered the screen in terms of reactions but as of now what also deserves attention is the kind of fall that we are seeing in terms of the frontline indices. We're still waiting by for numbers from ICICI Bank. That stock is down around 1.6% ahead of numbers. But something like Tata Steel, Dr. Reddy's, UPL, Lupin, all of these stocks are down anywhere between 26 to even 4% at this point in time. Not any better for the mid-caps. Not any better for or the mid-caps. Rather worse. Ekta. You know, you, as we speak, the mid-cap index is down about uh, 2%. And 1,500 stocks on the NSE, that, those are in the red as against just about 500 stocks which are in the green. Three stocks in the red for one in the green, the mid-cap index at the low point of the day. And look at those two lines, the red and the green ones only diverging further as we speak. But talking about green stocks, among those 500 green stocks, we have one stock which is rising, which is PVR, which is currently at the high point of the day. The company came out with the results which appear to be in line. We were waiting for some internals and we have the internals. So the ad revenue, that is fairly important. We were working with a number of about 8%. The ad revenue for PVR has grown by about 12%. Next, uh, net box office collections have grown by 8%. Food and beverages revenues have grown by 7%. We we'll try and get in more details, but as of now, advertisement revenue growing by 11% is something that the street likes, and that stock is at the high point of the day. But first up, let's take a look at all the other stories that we're tracking at this point in, uh, at this point in time. The market slips today's low ahead of the union budget tomorrow. Investors lighten up positions. Key indices slip almost half a percent while the mid caps take a beating down almost 2%. In key earnings today, ICICI Bank's profit is expected to fall 25%, but all eyes will be on the management commentary on stressed loans. Engineering major Larson and Tupro expected to report a good quarter. CNBC TV 18 poll pegs the profit growth for the third quarter at 50%. A slew of metal companies also announced their earnings today. Vedanta expected to report a strong set on the back of rise in prices of crude, metals, base price uh, and JSW Steel also expected to be strong on the back of a spike in global steel prices through higher raw material prices. We'll keep a check on the margins. All right, as we do that, uh, before we go into your queries, we have Kajaria Ceramics numbers flashing for you on your screen. We were expecting a double-digit volume growth there, a poll of 64 crores on the bottom line. The company's posted a net profit of 53 crores. will be interesting to see what the, uh, the, what the top line of the company is. And uh, just trying to get a handle on the press release itself. Uh, the top line should come up for you. Uh, the revenue is up 9%. We were expecting we, right. at least, um, yeah, that's the revenue growth for you. It's up around 9 odd percent. We were expecting a growth of around 12 odd percent. So that's come a little short of expectations. Uh, the net profit has come in at around 53 odd crores, like you mentioned. That is also short of expectations, and that's the reason why you're seeing that downtick come through on the stock down around 3 odd percent. So we were working with a revenue growth of around 12 odd percent. That's come in at 9 percent. And a net profit, which which is coming at round, uh, which is I think flat on a year in year basis. Um, it's at round 53 odd crores, I think, compared to around say 55 crores same time last year. EBITDA is 110 odd crores. Again, that is short of expectation. So let's see where the margins end up. Yep, 16.6%, 17% percent versus our expectation of around 18.7% in terms of margins. So overall, it's a you know top-down uh, sort of miss that we're That's seeing right, for Kajaria. Uh, um, at we this do point have the volume time, numbers yeah. as well. The company has posted a 10% volume growth. Remember the management telling us that they will go ahead and do post a 10% volume growth. The miss on the top line perhaps could be explained by the fact that uh, during the prices. quarter there was lower prices. The prices on tiles, the GST on tiles was cut from 28% to about 18%. And that could have reflected in the revenue decline or a lower than expected increase in the revenue. What is a positive is the fact that the volumes have grown 10%. This is absolutely mm -hmm. in line with what the management told us. And this looks a little more positive given Somani's numbers. But then again, the street is in no mood 
to uh, to be a, uh, any charitable to any sort of miss even if it is on the top line or the bottom line EBITDA is a bit of a miss my sense is it could be because of the power prices gas prices have increased so that could have led to the miss on the EBITDA yes you have it the power prices power and fuel costs up about 21 percent year on year at 120 crore that compares to about 100 crore so a lower revenue lower pricing and higher power pr uh, power costs have taken mm. a hit uh, or hit the EBITDA of the company which has grown uh, uh, gone all the way down to the bottom line volume mm. growth of 10 percent is something that the street will like but the numbers optically not uh, impressing not the street meeting yeah. a, a estimates so obviously uh, if in case there is volume growth of around 10 odd percent then obviously pricing has definitely taken a hit this quarter um, and we've already addressed that but uh, just to put it into perspective like Mangalam said there's been a you know a, a negative sort of reaction for most of the companies that have reported numbers Darbar is down around two odd percent we have uh, even something like uh, a couple of other numbers that were re released some time ago for example Arvind which is down around three odd percent post numbers and now we're seeing that sort of reaction come through for Kajaria Ceramics as well so it's not been a great day in terms of earning reactions but we still have the big boys to reckon with which would be Larson and Trubro and ICICI Bank so just keep your eye out in terms of the kind of disappointment most of the uh, most of the broader market numbers have seen at this point barring PVR which has managed to buck the trend so PVR should come up for you but we have Vijay Chopra joining in on the fundamentals and Sandeep Vagli who's joining in to answer all of the technical queries this hour afternoon afternoon Vijay as well as Sandeep um, Vijay in fact let's just start with uh, whether you've looked at you know all of these broader market numbers which have come out we were just discussing Kajaria but if you've managed to look at what's happened with Dabur as well as Arvind yeah so uh, overall I would say the uh, it's a mixed bag you know uh, whatever we have seen with Dabur there's a huge crack on the on the on the stock uh, but again, you know, I would say that it, it's a mixed uh, reaction of the anxiety in the market at this point of time. People are dumping stocks, they are staying light. And um, of course, you know, it, it's also the results uh, to some extent. So uh, I would say that, you know, uh, while PVR is a, uh, has, has shown good numbers, uh, these are a bit of a dampener, but I think that you know, as the market recoups back, uh, these stocks will come back very sharply. So, uh, on a standalone basis, one quarter's result cannot be uh, taken into account. These are good companies, Kajaria as well as Dabur. I think that they are great classical uh, consumption stories, and uh, we should wait for the dust to settle down. And I'm sure that markets would re uh, would, would rebound back, and so would the stocks. Uh, so, no panic as such. You know, I would uh, like to tell all the investors that. Don't get into a panic mode and dump stocks like that. Uh, stay invested. These are great managements. These are, you know, good companies with over five to ten decades of uh, experience. So stay invested in these stocks. Uh, so no, no panic as such in Dabur and Arvind uh, and you know other companies. All right, no panic, but uh, the street doesn't uh, listen to that. The mid cap index is now down 450 points. The Sensex down 200 points. The Nifty is very close to the 10,980 mark, a good 15, 20 points away from the 11,000 mark. So where does the buck stop? To get in some technical perspective, Sandeep, uh, he, everyone's saying do not panic, do not panic, but we're at the low point of the day, 450 points cut on the mid cap, individual stocks taking a pummeling. What would you suggest? Where do the technical indicators lie? Afternoon, Mangalam. I see some more downside. I think we are getting into a major event and you can't say that uh, all is well. I, I think I see some more downside. Nifty can fall from the current levels by at least 100 to 120 points. And any move towards 11,000, 11,020, uh, I would be a s seller. Yes, you do not panic if you are a long-term investor. But as a seller, uh, as a trader for a short term, for a few hours, for a few days, one needs to exercise caution. Okay, fair enough. That point is taken and it is looking like a very worrying screen at this point if you're talking about especially the broader markets and what's happening there. We've pointed out all of the earning reactions which have been negative, but there are other stocks. So something like Saturn Credit Care showing a cut of around 6 odd percent, Reliance Naval and Engineering down 6.5 odd percent, Havels, um, there, were a, there was that large trade that took place on Havels, but nonetheless that stock down around 6 odd percent, Divi's Labs down 6 percent, Tata Global Beverages which has seen such a strong run. That 
that stock too, which is down around five and a half four percent. Jubilant Food Works, despite those good numbers that they came out with this quarter, despite the rally, we're now seeing profit booking coming in on Jubilant Food Works also. That stock down around five odd percent. So that just gives you a kind of a sense of the market that maybe people are just taking positions off ahead of a big event, and maybe the global queues are something to reckon with as well, considering that there is that Fed meet which is going to conclude this evening. Take a break, but we'll focus on more stocks and queries once we're back. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Uh, some bit of respite seen on the Sensex, which has recovered about 20 points from the low point of the day. Nifty to a 5-7 point recovery from the low point of the day. Not really, can't call it a recovery. It's just about a bit of dilly-dallying at the low point of today's trading session. So let's get in quickly to the query that we have in, in, in terms of your stocks and your portfolio. So we have Jigisha, who writes to us from Mumbai, holds 7,000 shares of JSW Seal at 210 rupees for the last six months. Medium term investor wants to know whether to hold or sell. 7,000 shares at 210 rupees, sitting on a fair amount of profit. Vijay, the company reports its results today, but from a longer pers term perspective, the company is one of the few companies which has the ability to expand. What, was you, what would you suggest, uh, Jigisha, on JSW Steel? Uh, Mangalam, I would say that you know it's it's a company which has shown a complete turnaround in the last one one and a half years, and look at the entire Jindal Group stocks. Look at JSW, Jindal Steel and Power, uh, Jindal Steel Hisar. The entire group has done fantabulously well, and uh, my sense is that you know uh, they should post uh, good results, and uh, the stocks should uh, respond positively. So if uh, this lady is a long-term investor, I would say that stay invested in the stock. Don't get panicked. Uh, by 10, 20 rupees uh, here or there. Uh, so just uh, stay invested. And I think that, you know, the stock has the potential of reaching to 350, uh, even 400 levels to somebody who's with a longer-term perspective. Yes, in the short term, there might be some pain, as there is, as I said earlier, there's anxiety in the market. The, um, the global markets are playing the spoil sport. Uh, and so uh, so we might see some kind of a crack, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20 rupees. Uh, but in, with the longer-term perspective, I'm fairly hopeful that JSW Steel should uh, reach uh, 350 and then the next target is 400. Okay, all right. That's on uh, GS, uh, GSPL and GSW Steel. But the, those are the no sell numbers which are flashing on your screen. And just look at the performance that it's seen on the bottom line. A net profit growth of around 81%, which has come all, all the way at around 45 odd crores. And you can see the stock slip into the red on into the green on account of those numbers. Revenue is also up around 40% to 250 odd crores. So it's really the street which is, um, you know. Uh, really like, uh, uh, for example, gifting the stocks which have outperformed in terms of earnings and if your numbers are in line or maybe missing estimates, you know you're getting punished for it. Uh, so that's the performance which is coming in for NOSIL and we'll try and get you the margin soon enough as well. Well, we have, um, well, I think we need to take a break now. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll focus on more queries once we're back. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Well, uh, let's get in a couple of more queries now. And those are the no sell margins, which have also expanded all the way to 28 odd percent. So that should flash by on your screen. The stock is up around 3 odd percent reacting to those numbers. But otherwise, it's definitely a weak market. We're sub 11,000 currently for the Nifty. Arya now writes to us from Kolkata. She holds 1550 shares of Dabur at 307 since the past six months. Long term investor wants to know whether to hold or sell that particular stock. Well, Vijay, uh, taking into cognizance today's numbers as well, with the volume growth at around 13 odd percent, in line with the range that the street was working with, what would you recommend to um, someone who's a long term investor on Dabur? I would say stay invested. Uh, you know, as I said, these are classical consumption stories and you know they have an experience of decades uh, under their belt and uh, they uh, are already you know market has been definitely disrupted by what Patanjali uh, you know did in the last five years and you look at all the FMCG players whether they're, it's Colgate or Dabur or uh, you know any other company in the FMCG or Marico in the FMCG space so this dis disruption has happened but I think that you know these companies are now settling to the new um, new realities of the market they are bringing out pro products which are 
uh, more suited to the uh, you know uh, the ayurveda the natural um, you know uh, consumption market and i think that they will they will rework their strategies and go back to their drawing boards and uh, work accordingly uh, so stay invested long term investors no need to panic i think that dabar has the potential of going to 400 420 but again you know uh, with this kind of volatility and global markets trading at a high Uh, it's a it is a possibility that you know you might see pressure on the stock prices in the short term but long term i don't see much uh, problem uh, in companies like these okay long term no problem so let's get talking about the short term then uh, uh, sandeep what would you say in, of, of dabar it hit that 349 350 mark recovered a bit do you think that's a support zone and going forward what could the hurdles be at uh, till the 400 420 target that uh, which has been talking about I would agree Mangalam with the target 415 430 is my 10 to 12 months target and I would recommend a hold with a stop loss of around 320 and this should be on a closing weekly basis ideally Okay all right that's on Dabur we need to take a break now but more queries are solved on the other side Hey, well, it seems as though it's negative news coming in for Fortis, where the Delhi High Court has allowed the Daichi plea in order to seek that 3,500 odd crores in terms of a Singapore arbitration case against Fortis. So this is definitely negative, but it is expected to probably be appealed to higher courts already. And there is a parallel case which is going on in the Singapore court. But nonetheless, this would definitely set a precedent in terms of what we could probably expect, and is uh, definitely a big negative for Fortis Healthcare. You can see the stock reacting. uh negatively down around 6 or percent we have ashmit with us to tell us more details about this ashmit can you just give us all of the details and uh, what exactly went on in the court as well well the order was very brief uh, only the operative part was read out uh, the operative part essentially entails uh, that as of uh, today as of right now that is application for enforcement of the 3500 crore arbitral award has been upheld in plain words what that essentially means is that the arbitral award of 3500 crores which was granted in their favor which was to be paid by the singh brothers that award has been upheld so that effectively means that singh brothers malvinder and shivinder singh will now be required to cough up that amount of 3500 crores keep in mind that the arbitral award was for about 2500 crores and then the following 1000 crores is primarily interest and litigation costs added together adds up to 3500 crores that importantly has been upheld so to that extent yes indeed it does appear to be a setback but let's also keep in mind two aspects here number one uh, is that even as we speak there is a simultaneous appeal that has now been filed and is currently pending before the singapore court of appeals uh, that challenges the very same arbitral award that's part one the second is that this is only the first stage of litigation uh, this order has been passed to judge bench in all likelihood the parties are expected to challenge this order for the that is a remedy that is available to them if we understand uh, they are likely to exercise so that option is still available with them but as of right now as things stand this afternoon after this judgment a definite setback coming in a setback that is likely to cost them a sum of 3500 crore rupees back to you okay ashman just stay on because you know i just have a quick follow up question was there any sort of indication on what would happen when it comes to say uh, the banks holding the pledged shares in fortis plus as well as what this would mean for a possible stake sale in the company because if they have to cough up around 3500 crores eventually uh, there would be possibly some sort of asset sale which would be required so uh, any clarity on that What's interesting is that this application for enforcement by Daichi was filed in the year 2016. What followed over the next about uh, uh, 18 odd months is what we saw a spate of litigation by Daichi which sought various forms of interim relief against the Singh Brothers and interim relief in the nature of a stay order on the Singh Brothers from disposing off of selling off any of their assets. Uh, much to their relief, much to Daichi's relief, the Supreme Court had granted an interim stay uh, that until the final order is passed, until this order is passed uh, today until this order is passed there would be an interim stay that the parties would not be at liberty uh, to go ahead and to sell their assets or to create third party rights in any shape or form but that interim stay was only in operation until the order comes out the order has come out this afternoon and as of right now the uh, the singh brothers would be at liberty uh, to monetize their assets in whichever way they deem fit as long as they do meet with this current order of coughing up 3500 crore rupees Okay well uh, Ashwin thanks very much for that let's just get a quick reaction on this we have HP Ranina joining in for this uh, Mr Ranina if you could just throw some light in terms of the way forward uh, with regards to this Fortis case where the Delhi High Court has now upheld what uh, Daichi's plea was 
Well, it obviously shows that Daichi has a very strong ground for demanding this compensation, and Delhi High Court has now upheld it. Of course, it does not prevent the Singh brothers from going in appeal to the Supreme Court against the Delhi High Court judgment. So possibly they will do that, and uh, they will obviously try to get this order stayed so that they don't have to cough up this uh, 3,500 crore immediately. Let us see what the Supreme Court does, but I'm sure they will uh, they will certainly exhaust that remedy which they have of going in appeal to the Supreme Court. But otherwise, they'll have to pay up. There's no other way they can get out of it. All okay. right, Mr. Nina, thanks a lot for giving us that quick update uh, that they will go ahead. They will most likely exercise their option to go ahead and appeal to the Supreme Court. With that, we've completely run out of time on your stocks, but stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. Uh, closing bell comes up next.